In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the absolute maximum and minimum values of a multivariable function. So we're given a function f of x comma y on the rectangle d. How can we find the absolute extreme values? The first thing we need to do is determine the partial derivative with respect to x and with respect to y. So let's find f sub x first. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of negative 2xy, that's going to be negative 2 times the derivative of x, which is 1, times y. So that becomes negative 2y. Now the partial derivative with respect to y is going to be the derivative of x squared becomes 0. The derivative of negative 2xy, it will be negative 2x times the derivative of y, which is 1. So that's negative 2x. And the derivative of 4y will just be 4. Now, our next step is to set each partial, excuse me, each partial derivative equal to 0. And we want to solve for x and y. On the left, we could take out a 2. On the right, we could take out a negative 2, which will leave behind x minus 2. So we could solve for x here. x is 2. Now, if we take that x value, plug it into that expression, we can see that y is equal to 2. So this gives us the critical point 2 comma 2. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the rectangle bounded by x and y. So here is the rectangle D. It has the points 0, 0, 4, 0. These are the endpoints of the rectangle. Y varies from 0 to 3, so this point must be 4, 3. And over here, this is 0, 3. Now, you want to break up the rectangle into four line segments. So we're going to call this L1, L2, L3, and L4. Now, the absolute maximum and minimum values could be any one of the four endpoints that we have on this rectangle. It could be a point on the line segment. It could be this critical point here or some other point inside uh, this region. But we have to find out where those points are. Now, one thing that we need to do is make sure that the critical point lies in the rectangle D, which it does. 2 comma 2 is definitely in this range. So now, the next thing I'm going to do is make a table with x, y, and the function value f. And I'm going to place all of the endpoints in this table, as well as the critical point 2 comma 2. Now let's focus on the first line segment, L1. In this line segment, we can see that x, or rather y, is always equal to 0. So we have the function f of x comma 0. I replaced y with 0. And that's going to be x squared minus 2x times 0 plus 4 times 0. So we have the function x squared. And this is going to be between 0 and 4. Between 0 and 4, x squared is an increase in function. So for this function, 0 is going to give us a minimum value. 4 is going to give us a maximum value. So if we replace x with 0, we'll get 0 squared, which is 0. If we replace x with 4, we'll get 4 squared, which is 16. And now we could put these values in this table. So that's it for line segment 1 or we could say just segment one. 
Now let's move on to segment 2, L2. So notice that x doesn't change. So for this segment, x is always 4. y varies between 0 and 3 for that line segment. Now let's plug in 4 into this function. So this is going to be f 4 comma y. So replacing x with 4, we're going to have 4 squared minus 2 times 4 times y plus 4y. So that's 16 minus 8y plus 4y, which becomes 16 minus 4y. So this is a linear function, and it's a decreasing function. So on the interval from 0 to 3, y is going to be, y equals 0 will be a maximum value, and y equals 3 will be a minimum value, since it's always decreasing. So let's plug in 0 first. So this will be 16 minus 4 times 0, which is 16. And we already have that value. Now, let's replace y with 3. So this will be 4 comma 3. And so it's going to be 16 minus 4 times 3. That's 16 minus 12, which is 4. So that's a new value that we can put there. And that's it for line segment 2. Now let's move on to line segment 3. So for this one, we can see that y is always 3. And we can see that x varies between 0 and 4. So replacing y with 3, we have f of x comma 3. That's going to be x squared minus 2x times 3 plus 4 times 3. So that's x squared minus 6x plus 12. So this is a parabolic function like this. We're going to plug in 0 first. So this will be f of 0 comma 3. And that's going to be 12, which we can put here. And then we're going to plug in 4. So f of 4 comma 3, notice that we already know what that is. That's equal to 4. Now, because we have a quadratic expression, we know that there's a minimum value somewhere. And to find it, we could find the first derivative of this expression. So f prime of x comma 3, that's going to be 2x minus 6. Setting it equal to 0, we can see that we have a point of interest at x equals 3. So thus, we want to evaluate the function when x is 3 and y is still 3. So we have a new point that we can add in this table, 3 comma 3. So using this expression, it's going to be 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 12. So that's 9 minus 18 plus 12. 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 12 is 3. Now, it's good to check to make sure that this point is in the rectangular region D. And 3 is definitely between 0 and 4, so it's in the range. If it's not, we would have to get rid of this value. So it's important to check that before placing it in the table. Now, let's move on to the fourth segment, L4. So for this one, we can see that x is equal to 0. We could also see that y it varies between 0 and 3. So we're going to replace x with 0. So we have f of 0 comma y. That's going to be 0 squared minus 2 times 0 times y plus 4y. So this becomes 4y. And 4y is an increase in function. So 0 is going to give us the minimum value for 4y, and 3 will give us the maximum. So when y is 0, we have f of 0, 0, which is 0. And when y is 4, this is just going to be 4 times 4, which is 16.
Actually, that's supposed to be a 3 instead of 4. I plugged in the wrong number. So it's 4 times 3, which is 12. And we already have that. So there's nothing new with uh, this segment. The only thing that we could do is plug in the critical point 2 comma 2 into the original function. So that's going to be 2 squared minus 2 times 2 times 2 plus 4 times 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the third is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. So this gives us 4. So we can see that the absolute maximum is located at the point 4 comma 0. And the absolute maximum value is 16. The absolute minimum is located at the origin, 0, 0. And the absolute minimum value is the lowest of the f values, which is 0. So that's why I like to use the table, because it's very easy to identify which one is the absolute maximum and which one is the absolute minimum value. So that's it for this video. That's how you can find it given a multivariable function.